welcome back to my YouTube channel, Simply Wholesome Home. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to choose the right high chair for your baby. Um, this is from an occupational therapist's perspective. choose a good high chair for your baby well we're learning some a really really important skill that we're going to need for the rest of our life and that's learning how to eat and if we don't have the right support to do that we can learn maladaptive ways of learning to eat so having a supportive high chair can help with digestion and having a safe swallow it helps your child to feel secure and calm it gives them the stability that they need in order to learn good fine motor skills or hand skills. So we, when we talk as therapists, we're talking from proximal, so their core support, their tummy, needs to be well supported so that they can learn to use their hands. Things like no dangly legs and a good support underneath their feet means that they're gonna be able to have a longer attention span at meal times. You're gonna reduce that fatigue and tiredness that we see through um, overwhelm. So when they're tired, it doesn't mean they necessarily might put their head down and go to sleep. It might mean that they get really frustrated, silly, try to climb out their high chair quickly after you put them in. And it makes mealtime stressful for the whole family. So we wanna be talking about a positive mealtime experience because food is such an integral part of our life, part of their, our baby's development. And so it's really important that we start to consider what sort of equipment um, we are putting them in that's the best for their development. What we're gonna be looking at is five simple principles for choosing the right high chair. So the first one is 90-90-90. So 90-90-90 rule talks about the position of your body. So the ideal position for meal times and for learning, um, for like tabletop tasks at school um, and at meal times throughout your life is 90, 90, 90. So that means that we can have our hips at a 90 degree angle. So we've got a flat base of support underneath. They're not, we're not extended like this. We're not pushed really far back and we're leaning over like this. We're a nice square 90, 90, 90. Our knees are at 90, 90. So these are, this is the degrees and our feet are well supported at 90, 90. So I really wanna stress the feet part because many of the hikers that we can see don't have that foot support. So by giving this really firm base and following the simple rule of 90, 90, 90, then we can really help our children to have supportive seating. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do this in a trip trap high chair. This is Jack's Stoker trip trap high chair. It's my all time favorite high chair um, and show you how to fit that correctly to him. But before we do that, I just wanted to point out a couple of other seating options that we commonly see for meal times. So the most common high chair that I see with my friends and family members and in the community is the IKEA high chair. So this is the Kmart version of that high chair. So the great things about it is it's easy to wash. Um, it's a great size, a big tray with a lip on it. And it comes with straps and it can come in different different colors. The problem that we do see with the IKEA high chair is it doesn't have any sort of foot support. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go and buy an expensive high chair. There is ways of adapting the high chair. There is um, a really cool product called the FTSE. I think you can find it on Nimble and Nest and Pink My High Chair online. So I'll just tag those in the comments below. But you can find a really good system to give that foot support in something like the IKEA high chair. Now the other type is a bumbo, I'll just grab it here. So the bumbo is awesome for short term, um, helping your child to sit, put them on the counter with you. It's great at giving them support so before they're able to sit on their own, they're able to sit up and look at you and they do enjoy that. So there are benefits to the bumbo. The problem with the bumbo is, is that it puts you into what we call a dumped position. So if you can look into your bumbo at home, the contour of the seat is lower at the back near your bum and higher at the front. So you've got your feet sticking out and their bum is basically dumped back into the chair. 
So if we're trying to show your child how to eat in this chair, they're going to have their knees, I'll try and demonstrate, high up, and they're gonna be leaning over like this. They're gonna be compressing those digestive areas of your stomach and also making it challenging to open up that throat airway and do a safe swallow and learn how to do a safe swallow. So it's not necessarily the ideal position for eating. Now I'm not saying don't get a bumbo and don't use your bumbo, but I am saying consider that for the majority of the time you have your child in a high chair that you put them into something supportive. So this is my also my high chair. I think it's great for barbecues, taking camping, things like that. But I would not be wanting to use this for my son for most of his meal times. All right, let's get into looking at Jack's seating in the Stoker Trip Trap. So the Stoker Trip Trap is a great high chair because it is completely adjustable. So I don't know if you can see here, but it's got slits all the way up. So you can move these plates up and down. So one is for the footrest and one is for your bum rest. Then I've bought a baby seat um, extra piece that comes with it. And it also has the safety harness. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to turn Jack sideways in his high chair. Are you going to let him do that? Yeah, he's been so patient with me. It's so lovely. So I'm going to show you. It's not so far off where it needs to be, but I haven't specifically set it up for him. Here's your toy, buddy. Here's your fish. Here's your fish. Oh, yum, yum. Okay. So let's have a look on the side here. Take that tray off. Let's have a look. So what we can see is that he is slid a slightly bit far forward and because of that this bum support is right underneath his knee so it's pushing that out so technically the distance between his bum and his feet is actually quite good but what I want to be seeing is moving this slightly back so that he's pushed further up against the back of the chair so he's sitting more at 90 um, and not extended out so his back is pushed back and that way his feet will easily reach the bottom. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to loosen these little knobs here and then just simply slide this back and then pop him back in and I'll show you what it looks like. So Stoker gives you one of these little keys, Allen keys to go with it. So as you can see, Jack has a really good 90, 90, 90. His bum is pushed right to the back, which it wasn't before. So I'm really happy with how he's sitting in this chair. He looks better supported. I'll show you at the front. So at the front, you can also see that his knees nicely hanging over the edge. I can fit my finger in behind his knees, whereas before this was jamming up behind his knees. You're getting a bit technical here, but just in case you're wanting to know, um, Stoker also comes with um, a couple of recommendations for modifications to your chair. So that's basically how you want to be fitting the chair. I'm going to go out and let him have a play and then I'm going to come back and tell you a few more reasons why you want to be having a supportive chair, a few red flags to look out for and how to choose the right chair for your family. Okay, let's get into the rest of the things to look out for when buying your high chair for your baby. So the, um, the other thing is we need to think about a good a foot support. I want you to do an activity with me. So if you're on a regular chair at home or preferably a bar stool, I want you to take your feet off and don't let them touch any support or turn it so that the bar is not under your feet. Don't give yourself any back support and then I want you to try and eat something or have a conversation. Or if you want to take it even one step further, try and get someone to feed you. It's like being on a teeter totter. When we have our feet firmly planted on the ground, we are giving ourselves a lot more information about our, where our body is in space. So I just really want to emphasize, if you don't do anything else, look for good feet support. Now some of the chairs that I see, the feet support is really far away. So let's say you've got a high chair and you're putting in your baby. This is when they're the, at the most unstable. You'll hear Jack in the back room, he's having a bit of a play. That's when they're at the most unstable. And you're giving them a chair that has the least amount of support because their footrest is way too low for them to be able to reach. So think about having an adjustable footrest 
or creating your own. There were some great craftsmen that I came across in my day who built foot supports out of pallets, out of scrap pieces of wood, or duct taped all the old phone books together, or just use a box or something. Try anything to get that right level that your foot is firmly planted on some sort of support for your baby. So I'm not saying you have to buy an expensive high chair, just find a footrest. All right, the next thing you wanna be thinking about is how is your child gonna grow using this chair? So I think sometimes, or I know I did this when um, I was pregnant with our son, you know, you're thinking about them as a baby, you're thinking about them going and going at you, you're thinking about how am I going to manage night feeds, and sometimes we lose that focus that that baby is going to be growing into a four, five, six year old, and they're going to need some sort of equipment that's going to support them through that journey of learning to eat. So it doesn't stop after one year of age, it continues on past that point. So you're wanting a chair, a chair that grows with your child. The good thing about the IKEA chair is it has ample room and you can modify by putting in rolled up towels to give more support around that trunk region if it's too big, but it also lasts till they're about two years old. There are some high chairs where I've come across clients come into their home and the child looks ginormous in the high chair. Their feet are hanging well past the footrest, their head's hanging well past the top of the chair, they um, are squished and uncomfortable sitting in there. And the more uncomfortable you are, the less likely you're gonna to want to eat. So think about your child as it grows. So this is why I've chosen the Stoker Trip Trap High Chair, because this, child, this chair converts to a toddler seat and then it can sit up to 150 kilos, so well past my weight um, at a table. This also adjusts to modify. You can take this completely away if they're reaching the ground. A lot of families are using trip traps right up until their kids can easily sit in a dining chair. So the next thing I want to talk about is inclusivity. So what I mean by that is including your child at the dinner table. Yes, they're going to be eating different food from you or different textures of food from you from when they're too little to try normal table food but you do need to include them in your meal time. Not only are you teaching them about foods, but you're teaching them how to eat foods and you're teaching them about the routine and the social aspects of meal times. So they're gonna be watching you as adults and siblings learn how to eat. They're gonna be watching your engagement with the food. They're gonna be watching how you bring that food to your mouth. They're gonna be watching your reactions to the food. If they're feeling removed from the table, they're gonna be less aware of what's going on and they also might start to feel left out. So you see some kids wanting to pick off their parents plate because they think they're eating something different. That's another reason why I love the Stoker Trip Trap High Chairs. I can remove the tray and this slides right up to my table just like any other chair and they're right there a part of the dinner time. Already now Jack isn't really into any solids. He's tried a few bits here and there but he's not that interested but he loves joining in with meal times. We have him sitting next to us, he's watching us eat, and he's really concentrating on the moves that we're making. So you're building a really strong foundation by including them in the meal time. Okay, the fifth very important concept I want you to be looking for when choosing a meal time seating or your high chair, I want you to be thinking about the red flags. So red flags for meal time seating is things like inadequate posture. So that means if your child is leaning really far back, are they flopping over to the side? Are they bringing a leg up onto the footrest? That's a classic one. So many kids eat like this. It's not because they just want to be funny or silly. It's because they're looking for stability. Some kids can only eat with one hand. They've got, they they brace themselves with the other hand onto their tray and they're trying to eat with one hand. Um, if you're seeing them become really excitable or be really grouchy and overwhelmed quickly after the meal time, it may be because they don't have a good support supported seating system. This is partially to do with comfort and partially to do with the fact that we can extend our attention span when we have a better seating system. So that's a couple of the red flags to look out for. Um, so hit me up. Check me out at www.simply.com.
wholesomehome.com to read more in depth on this blog post. I'm going to link some of my favorite high chairs below, including the Stoker Trip Trap. And I can't wait to hear from you. Let me know if you need any creative ideas or if you want me to take a look at what your seating system is like. This might be the first step to creating better positive meal time experiences for your kids. I can't emphasize enough. It's an easy switch, but it's so important. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe to my channel. Send us a comment in the box below. Share your knowledge with our community so we can grow together. Thank you.